Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2017 here in Busan in the Republic of Korea. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Jian Zhangzhou, who is the Vice President of Carrier Business Group for Huawei. Mr. Zhu, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about smart digital transformation. It's the theme of ITU Telecom World this year. What does it mean to you and what are the key opportunities, in your opinion, uh, and challenges for the next five years? So when we're talking about the smart digital, digital services, so it means a big opportunity as well as a big challenges. So now all the way we look at it back, start from the voice to um, short message to the video. This is called digital services. Of course, it's cloud services. IoT become the entry, and in the future, B2B, cloud B2B, even mobile payments, now it's everywhere, everywhere you can say. So the digital, <clears throat> smart digital transformation has become a very, <clears throat> very economic and a very society. So behind that, also we need to think about the network transformation, architecture transformation, and also maintenance operation transformation. Okay, all the digital services based on the, the architecture network side. But look at the figure, that can be a figure. So now, so far, we, we, we have more than 2 billion people, no cell phone, globally. More than 3 billion people, no access to internet. More than 1.1 1, 1. 1 billion households, no broadband. So one side, we talk about the smart digital services. Another side, we have very weak infrastructure. So what do we do? According to the Huawei GCI, we found the front runners in this year, the GCI increased by 4.7 points. The adapter, which is between, is around 4.6 points. But let's look at the starters, just like 2.4. The digital gap and digital divide is become bigger and bigger. So we say the digital divide has become digital chasm, which, which is called the Muslim effect. So rich become richer, poor become poorer. So all the government and also decision makers and also the stake, stockholders, we have to think about, think about how to build very strong ICT infrastructure to enable the digital economic growth. And in terms of, uh, we talked about it a second ago there, national broadband networks, what's the significance of them in emerging markets? Actually, you know, the national broadband is, um, is a cornerstone, one of the cornerstones of the ICT infrastructure. And it's one of the enabler of the digital economy. And also can bring up your, your national competitiveness. According to ITU you know, research, we found only 10% of the home broadband penetration can make a contribution to the GDP by 1.3%, as well as you know, employee rate by 3 or 4%, productivity rate by maybe 5 to 10%. So ICT is, is a cornerstone of the economic growth. So far, more than 150 countries has made their own ICT plan by using the policy and the capital investment and the incentive in you know, the taxi to inspire and more and more investment and more and more investor country sectors. And what are the main challenges, in your opinion, to developing national broadband networks in emerging markets? We have a lot of challenges. Otherwise, we have very good results, <laughs> you can say. <laughs> the emerging market the population is almost 70% of the, the global population. The households, the number of households is almost 60% of the global households number. But look at you know, <clears throat> the home broadband penetration, the globally emerging market is less than 15%. In some countries, even less than 5%. 
if you look at de developing countries, more than 40 percent, maybe 60 percent, something like that. So the gap is still there. The market is there. But what is the challenge? I think most the, the number one is the cost. The cost is too high. Nobody is going to invest. If you are an investor, whatever in technology investor or government or, or some private sectors, you have to think about how soon and how quick you take back what you invest. If the ROI, we see uh, return of the investment is too high, more than 10 years, nobody is going to invest. And on another hand, the end users' affordability is low. The cost is high, affordability is low. So this is a problem. So how to solve the problems? Let me give you an example. For the, the site acquisition and R, R, ROW right away, in some country, you have to spend at a year, at least one month to get RO, ROW. Of course, the site acquisition, you, put, you spend more than half a year. You know, time is a cost. And also, you have to pay for the government. I was told in, in some country, one kilometer cable, you have to pay for rights more than 10,000 US dollars. This costs too much. That's number one. Number two, the construction cost is also very high. How to reduce the con construction cost by using the innovative technologies? There's also an idea about that. Number three, the last mile. You build a highway but you don't have the branch to the home because that has become very most difficult section sectors. So how to talk to you know build up an ecosystem to bring down the difficulties of the last mile, net all the five minutes home is very easy to get access to. That is the number three challenges. Developing broadband calls for collaboration across the ecosystem. I wanted to ask you, how can we achieve a win-win through policy, regulation, and infrastructure synergy? And the first one, I think, the, the method. So we have the same target to bring up the, you know, the home broadband penetration. Maybe if governments, maybe you know, the, the regulators, investors, or the participants, we have the same target. So how to work together at the government, you have to have a very good policy to create very good environments. At the same time, you can use also the initiative taxi to inspire or involve the investment to come together. That's number one from regulators and from the government policy. Number two, the government also have to think about how to create the policy to, to open the public facilities. A lot of public facilities, a lot of government utility, we call the silent assets, cannot be used by, by the ICT sectors. So if we can open that, to the ICT sectors, get all the ICT the players to reuse the existing resources. We save a lot of cost and time. That's number one. Number two, you know, the operators itself, because you are investors, also you are thinking about how to cooperate with another players. For example, operators to cooperate with, with um, electricity companies and power companies and also the gas pipe companies because they already have the resources just like fiber and the sites and the power and the supply. If you cooperate together, work together, you make the business more easier. Number, number two. Number three, okay, just like winter, just a while away. Also we think about how to develop very innovative solution to reduce the cost and then make the, the internet life more easier. And finally, what's the value for you of events such as ITU Telecom World 2017? And, and do you have a key message that perhaps you'd like to impart to our, our participants here? I like this platform. I think this is a very good platform for each stockholders to talk to each other, exchange ideas. Because now, if we, if we say this is an ecosystem world, ecosystem is not something only you. You have to a lot of you know, partners each other. I think 
this is a very good platform for, for us to exchange ideas. The key message I want to say, okay, the number one is the ICT is a cornerstone for the, for the digital economic growth, that's number one. Number two, we have to work together to build a very e ecosystem to bring the cost down, to shorten ROI, to make a life. Everybody has the right to get to access to the internet or mobile phone. Well, thank you very much for sharing these insights with us and uh, good luck here at the show and we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.